On this trip through the digestive system, we will study secretion, the production and release of juices and hormones by the GI tract and its accessory glands. Your goals for learning are to list the secretions found in each part of the GI tract, to associate each secretion with its functions, to explain the control of secretion in each part of the GI tract. Here's what you need to know. Each secretion of an organ is made by a specialized cell type, the anatomical organization of the autonomic nervous system, the histology of the alimentary tract wall, what enzymes are, how they work, and why they are needed for biochemical reactions. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. The GI tract is very busy after each meal. Its organs add a large volume of fluids to ingested food as it is moved along and digested. Click the mouth to see an average day's worth of food and secretions of the GI tract in a normal adult. Suppose you consume 800 grams of solid food and 2 liters of fluid in a day. About one and a half liters of saliva are secreted into the mouth. Click the stomach. The stomach secretes two liters of gastric juice. Click the duodenum. The pancreas delivers one and a half liters of fluid, and the liver delivers half a liter of bile into the duodenum. The small intestine secretes one and a half liters of fluid. The total amount of fluid entering the GI tract from all sources is nine liters. Click the terminal ileum. The small intestine absorbs eight and a half liters of fluids and most of the ingested food. Click the large intestine. The large intestine absorbs 0.35 liters of fluid. The numbers we have supplied are estimates, but they provide a guide for understanding the large volumes of fluid that the GI tract handles in a day. In summary, the GI tract receives 9 liters of fluid in a day and eliminates only 0.15 liters. Of the 800 grams of food ingested, only 50 grams of indigestible food are eliminated. Less than 10% of ingested food is eliminated under normal conditions. The salivary glands produce saliva, the periparotid, submandibular, and sublingual glands are called the extrinsic glands because they lie outside the oral cavity. There are smaller intrinsic salivary glands within the oral mucosa. The parotid glands contain only serous cells that produce a watery fluid containing enzymes, electrolytes, and a small amount of mucin. The other extrinsic glands contain both serous cells and mucous cells that produce a more viscous fluid. Saliva is produced in copious volumes and is delivered through ducts to the mouth. Its functions include protection, taste, lubrication, and digestion. Click Protection to learn more. The volume of saliva produced in the mouth can dilute hot drinks and foul-tasting substances and buffer acids. Saliva protects the oral mucosa, cleanses the mouth, and helps prevent dental caries. Saliva contains lysozyme, an enzyme that attacks bacterial cell walls, and IgA antibodies that are active against bacteria and viruses. Click Taste to learn more. Water is the primary component of saliva. It moistens food for swallowing and dissolves food molecules. The sensation of taste requires molecules to be in solution. Click Lubrication to learn more. 
Mucus lubricates food particles, making them easier to swallow. Click Digestion to learn more. Chemical digestion occurs in aqueous solutions. Saliva contains the digestive enzyme amylase that begins the digestion of starch in the mouth. Intrinsic salivary glands on the tongue release lingual lipase. It is optimally active at an acidic pH and may digest some triglycerides in the stomach. The control of salivation is unique in two ways. First, it is mediated almost entirely by the nervous system. Note that both gut hormones and neural reflexes regulate secretion in other portions of the GI tract. Secondly, both the parasympathetic and sympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system stimulate salivation. Note that parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves have opposing actions on most other organs. Click the parasympathetic fibers of cranial nerve 7 or 9. The parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system is the primary controller of salivation. Parasympathetic fibers are carried in the facial and glossopharyngeal nerves, cranial nerves 7 and 9. Parasympathetic activity initiates and maintains salivation. In general, parasympathetic stimulation produces large amounts of watery saliva containing enzymes. Click the brain stem to reveal stimuli for salivation. The thought, smell, or taste of food stimulates the salivary center in the medulla to increase parasympathetic activity and salivation. Acidic substances like a piece of lemon and pressure of chewing food or non-food in the mouth, like a peach pit, are powerful stimuli for salivation. Intestinal irritation and accompanying nausea are also powerful stimulants of salivation. Click the cerebral cortex to reveal stimuli that inhibit salivation. Fear, fatigue, sleep and dehydration all inhibit salivation. Click the sympathetic fibers arising from T1, T2 and T3 of the spinal cord. Activity in the sympathetic nervous system produces a small volume of saliva that is thick with mucus. Because sympathetic stimulation accompanies frightening or stressful situations, the mouth may feel dry at such times. In summary, both parasympathetic and sympathetic activity increase salivation. Both also stimulate metabolism and growth of the salivary glands. Mucus is the only secretion produced by the esophagus. Its function is lubrication. Click Lubrication to learn more. Remember that the esophagus is simply a conduit between pharynx and stomach. It serves no digestive or absorptive functions. Since it is long and flattened when empty, keeping it lubricated with slippery mucus facilitates passage of a bolus along its length. The gastric mucosal epithelium is made entirely of secretory cells, including exocrine, endocrine, and paracrine cells. Exocrine cells secrete products into the stomach lumen. These products make up gastric juice, which includes mucus, pepsinogen, the precursor to the enzyme pepsin, hydrochloric acid, and intrinsic factor. Click each component of gastric juice to see where it is secreted. When you have finished, click Continue. Mucus is secreted throughout the stomach. Pepsinogen is secreted throughout the stomach.
acid and intrinsic factor are secreted together from the same cells in the fundus and body of the stomach. Enteroendocrine cells secrete gastrin and paracrine cells secrete histamine into the interstitial space. Click the hormone and paracrine to see where each is secreted.